Our next speaker is Yilke Schremer, uh, Perfication of Positive Periodic Solutions to Non-Autonomous Undept Duffin Equations. Yilke, you are welcome. Что я хочу, я хочу поблагодарить за приглашение и за возможность выступить на вашей конференции. Но буду докладывать на английском, что вы все понимаете. Окей, okay. your Russian is wonderful. <laughs> you will last time. Your Russian is proof. <laughs> In my contribution, we will consider uh, the parameter dependent equation one, where uh, function P, H and F are omega periodic locally Lebesgue integrable. Uh, lambda is greater than one because we are interested in the superlinear case, the nonlinearity, and mu is a real parameter. Uh, as usual, in the curatory case, by a solution to equation one, we understand a locally absolutely continuous function together with its first derivative which satisfies the equation one almost everywhere. Uh, if lambda equal three, then we obtain a well-known Dufink equation with cubic, with cubic nonlinearity, uh, which appears, for example, when approximating a nonlinearity in the equation of motion of the following oscillator. Oscillator consists of a mass body of the weight m and the linear spring of the characteristic k and non deformed length l. The body moves horizontally without any friction. And as for the base point v, it may oscillate vertically with a small amplitude. Uh, this is a system with one degree of freedom described by the coordinate x. Uh, the equation of motion is the following, you can see, and if we approximate nonlinearity in the equation by a third order Taylor polynomial centered at zero, we arrive at the equation of, which is a particular case of the equation one with linear part, cubic nonlinearity, and certain force in turn. And our problem is, or our goal is, to study the existence and the exact multiplicity of positive omega periodic solution to equation one, depending on the choice of the parameter mu. Uh, let me show as a motivation what happens in the autonomous case. So if D is positive and strictly less than L, then you can see that both friction, so I'm sorry, both fractions here in the equations are positive. So we will consider the autonomous equation two where constants A and B are positive and mu is a real parameter. Let me remind that we are interested in positive periodic solutions. So if we denote or if we define the value mu star by this formula, uh, we can, we can determine uh, phase portraits or how to say it. we can elaborate phase portraits depending on the choice of parameter me and we obtain the following proposition the following four conclusions so if mu is non-negative then the equation two the autonomous equation has a unique positive equilibrium x zero and many non-constant positive periodic solutions with different with different periods. The, the shape of the phase portrait is, is approximate just for illustration, okay? Uh, if mu is positive, but strictly less 
than mu star, then you can see that the equation two has exactly two equilibria, x1 and x2. And again, many non-constant positive periodic solution corresponding to closed red orbit here with different periods. And moreover, as for the structure of all periodic solutions, every non-constant periodic solution positive of the autonomous equation two is strictly greater than the equilibrium X1 and oscillates around the equilibrium X2. The conclusion C concerns the case where mu equals mu star. In this case, we have just one equilibrium positive X0 and no non-constant positive periodic solution occurs. And the last case, if mu is greater than mu, st mu star, then there are no positive periodic solutions at all. And as a result of this, let's say, discussion, we can say that if mu, if A and B are fixed, and mu is considered as a bifurcation parameter, then mu star is its, let's say, critical value because crossing the value mu star, uh, a bifurcation of positive periodic solutions appears. If mu is greater than mu star, there are no positive periodic solutions. If mu is equal to mu star, there is just one positive periodic solution. The constant solution is periodic with an arbitrary period. And if mu is less than mu star, there are at least two constant solutions. It means there are at least two positive periodic solutions with arbitrary with an arbitrary period. And now we extend the conclusions of proposition one to the non-autonomous case. So let us go back to the equation one. And uh, we extend the conclusions under the following hypothesis. So I will introduce three hypotheses for each coefficient p, h, and f in the equation. As for the coefficient p, as for the linear part of the equation one, we will assume that the Green's function of the corresponding linear periodic problem is negative. We will write that the coefficient p belongs to the class B minus. The minus here shows that the Green's function is is negative. It means that, or not it means, it follows from the hypothesis that for every uh, non-homogeneous term f, the corresponding linear periodic problem has a unique solution. And if f is non-negative, then the unique solution u is non-positive. Uh, alternatively, we can define this this uh, hypothesis as the validity of this implication. Uh, this is something like a theorem on differential inequalities. If function z is absolutely continuous together with its first derivative, function z satisfies differential inequality and verifies parallel conditions then the function z is non-positive on the entire interval zero omega. There is another uh, terminology for the same property in the literature. Uh, maximum principle holds for 
the problem for the problem star. So we will not assume the exact condition for P. We only assume that P belongs to a certain white class of, of the linear equation, or roughly speaking. But uh, sufficient conditions for P guaranteeing the validity of, of the hypothesis P are well known in the literature. Let me show uh, two well known standard conditions for for uh, the class V plus, V minus, I'm sorry, for the maximum principle. Condition A, I don't see. Condition A. Condition A requires that the coefficient P is non-negative and non-trivial. In particular, in the autonomous case, if A is positive number, then the coefficient in the linear part satisfies the condition A. So the assumption P is satisfied for the autonomous equation two. Uh, if negative part of the coefficient P is not trivial, but is small enough with respect to the positive part, then it means in condition B, then again, con coefficient P belongs to the class V minus, it means a maximum principle holds for the program start. These conditions are, are well known. Uh, as for, as for, uh, the coefficient h in the cubic nonlinearity, uh, we assume that the function h is non negative and non trivial. And the last hypothesis concerns the function f. Um, in the autonomous case, the function f is identically equal to minus one. So the hypothesis F for the hypothesis F concerns the function F. <laughs> so we assume that a mean value of the function f is negative. And if we consider the linear problem with non-homogeneous term f, then this problem has a unique solution and this solution is negative. For example, if the coefficient p belongs to the class v minus, it means our hypothesis p is satisfied, then the hypothesis F holds provided that the, the negative part of F is, is large enough. This is a sufficient condition for the, the hypothesis F under the assumption P. Uh, in particular, if F is non-positive function and non-trivial, then the hypothesis F is satisfied. And now I can formulate theorem. I can extend uh, the facts known in the autonomous case for the equation one. So assume that hypothesis P, H, and F are satisfied for the equation one. Then there exists a number mu zero, which is positive and finite such that the following four conclusions hold. The first conclusion concerns the case where mu equals zero. If mu equals zero, then we can claim that the, the non-autonomous equation one has at least one positive omega periodic solution. And for any couple of distinct positive omega periodic solutions u1 and u2 
this equation is satisfied, it means that uh, all uh, positive omega periodic solutions um, intersects each other. We can compare it with the fact known in the autonomous case, and the conclusion one is in a compliant with the, the known fact. Because in the autonomous case, there exists for any omega, there exists positive omega periodic solution, the constant solution. And if there are two positive periodic solutions with the same period, then these solutions intersect because non constant solution in the non autonomous case oscillates around the equilibrium. An open question for me is what happens in the case of mu, in the case of negative mu? Uh, I'm not able to prove anything in this case and this, in this moment. Uh, the second conclusion in theorem one concerns the case where mu is between zero and the number mu zero. Then the equation one has positive omega periodic solutions u one, which are ordered in this way, u two is greater than u one. And as for the structure of, of the set of all positive or non-negative omega periodic solutions, we can show that for any non-negative omega periodic solution U to equation one, uh, these two conditions are satisfied. It means U is greater than the solution U1 and U and U2 intersect each other. which is also in a compliance with the fact known in the autonomous case. Because we have seen that in the non-autonomous case, if mu is less than mu star, then there are two positive equilibria and every non-constant positive periodic solution is greater than x1 and oscillates around x2. It is the same, it is the same structure. If mu equals mu star, then the equation one has a unique positive omega periodic solution. And finally, and finally, if mu is greater than mu star, then the equation one has no positive omega periodic solution, which is Again, in a compliance with the corresponding fact for the in the, in the autonomous case. And at the end of my contribution, I would like to say a few words about estimation of the critical value mu zero. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, I need one notation. I need notation. Delta. Uh, it's known that if the homogeneous periodic problem has only the trivial solution, then the non homogeneous problem is uniquely solvable for every f. Uh, now we, we don't need, in this moment, we don't need uh, the positivity or negativity of the continuous function. It is known that u admits the integral representation and then we obtain then we obtain this estimate of the solution u where the number delta of p depending only on the coefficient p uh, denotes a norm of the greens of the greens operator and by by using this this um, number delta we can prove the following lower and upper bound of mu zero. So we assume that the hypothesis P 
to satisfy it. The hypothesis H holds. And we assume that this strict inequality, which is a sufficient together with P, which is a sufficient for a hypothesis F. Then uh, the number mu star appearing in theorem one satisfies these two inequalities. You can see that here you can see the number delta introduced before. Uh, uh, if now, if we if we go back to the autonomous case, so if we consider again the equation two, then P is identically equal to A, H is identically equal to B, A and B are positive, F is identically equal to minus one. It means positive part of F is zero, negative part of P is zero. And if the coefficient P is constant, then the number delta of p can be estimated and we obtain as a result this lower and upper bound of mu mu zero and if you remember if you remember the expression this this red expression this red expression here is a critical value mu star appearing in the in the autonomous case so this i think it shows that uh, that our estimate in the general case is is at least at least meaningful of course we cannot obtain that mi zero equals mi star in the autonomous case because we need some estimation in the proof so i think that's all what i wanted to say thank you for your attention okay thank you very much uh what questions do you have dear colleague i have a question yes you're welcome thank you Yuri, uh, this theorem uh, concerns only the case with the cube or with the general lambda with general lambda okay thanks so i have another question can you show again is uh, conditions p h and such for the theorem which condition I don't understand well. Uh, what, uh, conditional theories, conditional functions in P and H. Uh, conditions on a fun on which function? H. H. E, H and uh, the most third one. Yeah. As for the function H, we assume only non-negativity. Unfortunately. Uh, function h cannot change its sign. Yeah, the only non negativity, and there are no such conditions on function p. I don't hear you, but I'm sorry. Okay. But uh, a was positive. A was uh, a was positive in the autonomous case. Yes, but p is negative. But b and B is positive in the autonomous case. And here is H so is it's kind of strange because uh, so A is positive, B is negative, but then uh, it's uh, almost the same equation, but uh, P is now negative. I H is positive, but the results are very similar. Ah, uh, you mean if H is if A is pos negative and B is positive? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, if A was uh, negative, it would be more logical, I suppose. If A is negative and B is positive, uh, it is, uh, it is, let's say, the second kind of, of the Dukink equation, which comes, which comes from the, the pendulum equation. And in this case, uh, yes, the result concerning the, the autonomous case are, are similar. Mm -hmm. And as for the non autonomous case, uh, we can only extend those results. Uh, the assumptions are that that the coefficient p that the, the anti maximum principle holds for the linear 
for the linear part, then will be plus non non negative h and uh, the function f can be in some sense arbitrary. In that case, we can show more than than it is. This case is more complicated because the proof is based uh, on on construction of uh, labyrinth upper functions which are not well ordered. Therefore, I am able to construct as as for this open question. I'm able to construct labyrinth upper functions for mu negative, but I don't have the existence theorem because Labyrinth and upper functions are are reversely ordered, ordered, and I don't have I don't have um, the existence theorem, and I'm not able to prove anything in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, it's open question in views less than zero. Okay, thank you very much.